KGW reviews Friday, October 12th, just as it was. Friday differed from other Fridays only insofar as it was Columbus Day, October 12th. The thousands of suburbanites had commuted to the city Friday morning with no more anticipation than for the day's routine. It was simply another day, differing only in the strange calm. A gray-black, windless calm which stood over the city. Still, who could say that it was any different? So they're still clearing the debris from the southern Oregon town of Gold Beach. The weather view on KGW, rain and some wind later this afternoon, becoming gusty by evening. Cooling tonight with the highs near 60, lows near 42. This was mid-morning, Friday, October 12th, and still not unusual. The World Series had been rained out of Candlestick Park in San Francisco, and Portland was preparing at 1.15 p.m. for the Huskies' Oregon State football game at Multnomah Stadium the following day. We interrupt our regular KGW program schedule to bring you this weather advisory. The Weather Bureau is forecasting southerly winds of 20 to 40 miles an hour today, gusting to 60 miles per hour by late this afternoon or early evening. But despite the warning, and there were others, for the next two hours, Portlanders found the message hard to take seriously. There had been snow reports before, and then no snow had fallen. There had been reports of sunshine, and it had rained. News. Uh, Paul, I was wondering, what was the wind report that you just gave out? Uh, according to the report, 60 miles an hour, top gas. 60 miles an hour. Hmm. Isn't that a little strange? It's so calm out right now. I was just wondering. Apparently, it's the tag end of the thing that hit the Gold Beach yesterday, but that's oh. the uh, report that we've got from the Weather Bureau and uh, Jack and Pell here. I see. Well, I just thought I'd call in and ask, and I thank you very kindly. Mm, thanks so much for calling. Mm hmm. Right. Bye. News. Uh, yes, uh, I'm calling to ask uh, if you've had any uh, specific uh, reports on this wind that uh, we've heard about out here in our neighborhood. Well, uh, we have the Weather Bureau forecast, and Jack Capel has forecast. It'll be about uh, 60 miles an hour and hit sometime in the late afternoon. Oh, 60 miles an hour? Well, gust that high. Oh, my goodness. Well, it, uh, that hardly seems possible because it's so calm. No one was fully prepared for the events of 5 p.m. Friday, October 12th, when the tale of Typhoon Frida was to lash a swath of death and destruction along the Pacific Northwest. Moments before it began, KGW's Wes Lynch was entering his second hour of the hustling home gig, and it was just another day with a wind report. <laughs> Yeah, that's Ben Fabric and the one called Alley Cat as we get underway with our second hour for the Hustlin' Home Gig. Wes Lynch right here. An interesting note, at 20 minutes before 5, the temperature in the KGW listening area was 5, 5, 55 degrees. And now, here at 8 minutes past 5, the temperature 64 degrees. That's a 9 degree jump of the past 28 minutes. And winds are increasing rather drastically, too. We just had one gust up to 60 miles per hour. So you better batten down the hatches, buddies. And if you're driving... Be particularly careful. And Wendell, y you be careful too. This is Wendell Cartwright, your traveling country club reporter, on the street asking folks about country club malt liquor. Pardon me, sir. Yeah, what do you want? It was exactly 5.09 p.m., October 12th. KGW's downtown studios were suddenly plunged into darkness and employees waited those precious seconds for the lights to return and waited. At KGW's transmitter in North Portland, the dead air had signaled immediate action for rolling the emergency tape of music to fill until the downtown problem could be solved. At 28 minutes and 30 seconds past five, KGW's transmitter in that 60 seconds, the auxiliary power was turned on. 
That was the only minute of silence for KGW Radio. And for a time, KGW was to be the only Portland radio station on the air. At six minutes and 20 seconds before 6 p.m., a veritable miracle of broadcast had been lashed up between KGW's Tom Preeb and studio engineer Emmett Bernards. And in North Portland, engineer Art Bean was quick to realize emergency measures were the sudden rule for the night, and the power generator had to be prepared to withstand its test. Well, you had to keep all the hatches shut for fear the wind would blow it all apart, is that right? Yes, uh, where we go up is the hatches in the middle of the building, and there was antenna poles and uh, pieces of wood left from the old centennial sign of blowing uh, across the top of the roof and over the side of the building. And we're afraid to take the lid off the hatch because we know just as soon as we did that and stuck our head out, it was allowed to get hit by some flying debris. When we got up there, uh, we were a little better off than we thought we were because uh, the third gallon of gas, we knew we were good for a little while yet. There was precious gasoline from Bernard Den of North Portland who parked his car and walked a quarter of a mile through wind-torn marshland to our transmitter. There were Mr. McDermott and David Carlson who drove through wind with 25 gallons. There was the Pacific Intermountain Express and the Multnomah County Sheriff's Deputy with 40 gallons of gasoline and there were countless others. We're operating at this moment on emergency power being supplied by our mobile news wagon. The signal may not be what you've come to expect from KGW, but it's about the best we can do under the circumstances. You know by now that strong winds have hit the Portland area. We've recorded gusts up to 85 miles per hour, and then there's another one over 80. KGW meteorologist Jack Capel is returning to the KGW studios from the Weather Bureau station at Portland International Airport. There goes another gust over 85 miles per hour. As I was saying, Jack Capel should return momentarily. The entire KGW staff is attempting to gather as much information as we can. Of course, telephone lines are jammed and we're having trouble getting through to many officials. Here's Frank Bonima. Frank, uh, what have you been able to learn? We've been up in the front of the building with many of the employees here of KGW Radio and TV West looking outside. The wind is howling down 13th Avenue. Across the street, one house has began to lose a roof. Twigs are going down the street. We also have a hot wire that has fallen across a tree in front of a residence across from the KGW building. It looks like a bad one. Now we've just been informed that KGW TV, Channel 8's tower has gone down. That report from Andy Jordan just moments ago at the TV tower at Channel 8 has fallen. The Channel 8 television tower high atop Skyline Boulevard in the northwest Portland Hills, steel and cable built to withstand winds in excess of 100 miles per hour, had crumpled like so much matchwood. Engineer Laird Wise watched it fall. Well, I could come on and I've seen the tower weaving and uh, I'd never seen the tower uh, move before at all and as soon as I seen that thing whipping around like it was, I immediately uh, called the studio and informed uh, the chief engineer that uh, I thought the antenna might come down. And uh, sure enough, it did. About uh, 35 minutes later, the thing fell down. Your antenna was some 600 feet high. And, uh, about uh, 648 feet. Uh-huh. Uh, was anyone hit by the uh, antennas that fell there? No, there's only one person up there, myself. And I, I was stuck up there till uh, 7.30 the next morning till uh, my relief could walk in. Oh, you had to walk out, huh? Yeah, right. It had begun in Portland and throughout most of Oregon, this lash of Typhoon Frida screaming out of the South Pacific. And before it would end, 21 people would be dead in KGW's broadcast area alone. Oregon would sustain some 170 millions of dollars in damages. There was darkness and cold and wind and some candles and eventually a gas lantern or two volunteered by listeners for KGW staff. And eventually power from our mobile car parked alongside the control booth, purring its precious voltage that would mean the difference between an informed citizenry in this crisis or nothing.
The cramped quarters of the control booth became the control center for northern Oregon and southwestern Washington. A small army of personnel moved into action. We're receiving reports now of several trees down, roads closed. Here's one. Uh, incoming traffic is being blocked and turned back by police on East Stark. It says it's closed beyond 102nd trees down, 110th and hot wires on the road. What do you have there, Frank? We have another hot wire down. This one located on Southeast Stark between 36th and 37th. Also, three quarters of the roof gone on the bank at uh, Burlingame. Frank, uh, Jack Capel just uh, walked in here. We got a report. Uh, Jack, what's the situation now? Wes, I just came across town from the airport, and the damage is getting quite widespread. The wind was getting more violent all the time as I was traveling through. There was all manner of things flying through the air, parts of roofs, trees going down, and flying glass. There's things coming off the roof here at KGW TV, and I found it difficult to even find a place to put the car to get it out of the way. Now, we do have a strong low-pressure area off the mouth of the Columbia River right now. At least we'd estimate that's where it is. We don't really know because communications were going out from many of the weather stations in Oregon. The barometer now is down to 28.85. That's the lowest barometer reading we've had here in uh, almost 11 years. It was December 1951 that the barometer was down that low before. The wind is channeling up through the Willamette Valley between the Coast Range and the Cascade Mountains. This channeling effect uh, actually adds to its violence. The low pressure to the north, that is around the Columbia Valley, and higher pressure to the south is actually what is driving the wind. This storm gradually moved up through southwestern Oregon, actually formed about 900 miles off the coast of California yesterday and has been traveling very fast. It wasn't until the forenoon today that we realized that winds were reaching uh, high velocities, 50 to 60 miles an hour. Down from the valley, the reports are quite spotty. We've had one report that Eugene has had gusts to 85 miles an hour. We're operating here by candlelight, but I can just see that wind gauge over there. It looks as though we had something over 60 on that one. There's one up over 80. Wasn't that up over 85, Les? Or Wes? About 85. Yes, 85 miles an hour. That's the highest gust I've ever seen on that gauge. The uh, next report that we received late this afternoon was a rather indirect one from Corvallis that they had had gusts at the airport there as high as 100. And there's another 85 on our gauge. The uh, no report from Salem, but we understand there is damage at the airport down there. What's that? 93, Frank Bonamus. There goes our gauge. There goes our gauge. Drop back to zero. We don't know what happened. There's wreckage coming off the roof up there. Perhaps some of that wreckage hit the gauge, or perhaps the bearings just burned out. But there was a 93-mile-an-hour gust, and then finally the wind gauge went. In less than an hour, downtown Portland had become a scene of airborne rubble, with the flash of high-tension lines screaming into a black, wind-lashed sky, the wail of sirens knifing into the 100-mile-per-hour gusts, and a populace huddling against buildings or trying to drive through the nightmare to their homes and to their families. Once again, let me, for well, the uh, sake of becoming repetitive, urge you folks that are driving now to stop your cars in an area where there are no trees or wires overhead and make your way to a public building. Get inside. Do not attempt to drive on the streets of Portland at this time. There are hot wires down, uh, large limbs flying through the air. It's, um, it's a mess in downtown Portland. If you're inside, stay inside. Do not attempt to mm, travel Unless, of course, in the case of extreme emergencies. Frank, you have anything that's current there? We're waiting for uh, some more notices actually to be brought in. We will again warn the people to stay away from windows if you're at home. Stay away from windows for heaven's sakes. There's much danger outside. And if you are inside now, do not try to get outside to save any material uh, gear. Remember that whatever's out there can be replaced, but your, your life or welfare cannot. So stay inside at any cost. Anything outside your car or anything? Now we have some more reports. Wes? Of course, these are reports of incidental damage coming in now, and I'm sure that the entire city is, is a scene of trees across streets. Here's a tree that fell. It's covering a whole street and demolished a parked car at 924 Southeast 13th Avenue. Hot wires down on that one. A report in from uh, the 10th and Montgomery area near the Bohemian Restaurant that a tree limb's hanging over the corner, and uh, let's see, uh, they've got near the Martha Washington Hotel. It's uh, advised not to try to walk on 10th or Montgomery Street. There's some uh, 
some danger of getting hurt there, and there's some danger of getting hurt anywhere in the Portland area. So please stay inside if that's where you are now. Once again, we'll keep you up to date with the latest emergency information as it comes in here to the KGW studios. The whole staff working by candlelight at this moment, and I'm sure many of you are listening by candlelight inside, and that's the place to stay. Again, if you're driving and there is no extreme emergency involved in your driving, find a place to park that car and get in a public building now. now.